Last time on Sailing One Life, we rented a car in St. Lucia to explore the island and its geological wonders. Our first stop was the stunning Denary Falls. We then headed over to see the volcanic activity at the Sulphur Caldera and rejuvenated ourselves with a hot mud bath. Feeling refreshed, we were ready to tackle the challenge of hiking Gros Piton, and we were rewarded with some spectacular views. Hi, we're Brooke and Gary. A year ago, we traded the American dream for our dream. Welcome to One Life. When we went to return the car, the car rental woman said that she knew who Gary was. Yeah, we, uh, we apparently went viral here in St. Lucia for walking down the street by ourselves not wearing masks. So apparently we got put all over the news and people are online debating whether we should be here and be arrested or not, which is pretty ridiculous. A viral video of two Floridian tourists walking along in Grosley without wearing masks has sparked anger following the fact that a number of locals have been stopped, charged, and in some cases even arrested by local authorities, especially in the Cachery city center for doing the same. Needless to say, we were taken aback by all this negative attention. With no one else in sight, we had simply pulled our masks down to our necks while walking down the street, when a man pulled over to record and interrogate us. When interacting with locals, we had been very careful to always wear masks, even if the locals were not. We felt singled out and targeted, as it was clear from the video the man had started recording us before he had even seen our faces. As we read the endless pages of comments on social media, it became obvious that at this time, most St. Lucians preferred tourists either stay home or stay confined inside a resort. Not feeling welcome here anymore, we decided it was time to move on. So we are just finishing up getting the boat ready for our sail to Antigua. It's about a two day sail from here in St. Lucia. All right. Let's... All right, let's hope we have a good sail. No autopilot again, so. No autopilot and it's gonna be a little sporty out there. So one of us sleeps, one of us steers, 48 hours straight. Yep, here, all right. Here we go. Let's do it. <laughs> Our plan was to head north from St. Lucia, having to sail right past Martinique, Dominica, and Guadeloupe due to COVID closures before arriving in Antigua. We set sail on our 200 nautical mile offshore trip to Antigua. To start, the conditions were pretty ideal for our downwind sail. We're going fast! Woohoo! Averaging over seven now. Only 36 more hours to go. Yay. I hope the wind stays like it is. But we have all four of our lines are out right now because our buddy boats, Sersha, Bow and Brandy, and Too Short, Darren and Crystal, we've decided to have a fishing competition on the way to Antigua. And so far, Sersha is up by one tuna. Sersha, nice work over there with the tuna. Yeah, thanks. Hey, were you uh, tagging along? Yeah, we tuned down and listened to it. We've had our lines out and we've got a whole bunch of boobies diving and bait fish everywhere right now, but no hits yet. Typically, when we see bait pods stirring and birds slamming down to pick them off, it means we are in perfect fishing conditions. This go around, we didn't get so lucky. Fish on, but it's way back there. All our, we have full sails up. I'm gonna try to get the sails in. We Gary reels it in. Off. One life.
continued on our way, we sailed right by Martinique, Dominica, and Guadeloupe, as they were all closed to US registered vessels at the time due to COVID. And all was great until nightfall, because, well, everything happens at night. So it was my turn to come up on watch, and I come up and we go to turn the motor on because we lost our wind. It's making a really weird sound. So we're just bobbing along. We're actually not even going a knot right now, and Gary's down looking at the engine. I really hope it's nothing major. All right, you just had me fire it back up. Is that idle? It's, I have it in neutral right now, yeah. Put now. Okay, forward. This sounds better than it did last time. To this day, we aren't sure exactly what happened, but for some reason, it sounded like our transmission was slipping. After Gary checked all the fluids and we turned on the engine again, we had no issues, knock on wood. But for every low moment out here, it's offset by something magical, and we were greeted by this double rainbow the next morning. Even with lack of sleep and lack of wind, we made the best of motor sailing. We turned our stereo up and enjoyed the sight of passing Guadalupe in the distance and the deep blue water our home was gliding over. Guadalupe, the wind started to fill in for us. It was smooth sailing the rest of the way to our destination. And 33 hours later, we are anchored safely in English Harbor. We slept like four hours last night. So now that we're safely anchored here, I'm gonna lay down and get some sleep. It really wasn't a bad sail though. It was pretty fast. I think we averaged over six knots. So we thought it might take us about two days, but it took us about a day and a half. So we came in here to English Harbor at night and it's a crowded anchorage, but we were able to squeeze in and find a spot to drop the hook for the night so we can get some sleep and we can always reposition in the morning, but we're good for now. So time to get some shut eye. The following day, Following you guys. Hey, no they, one knows where customs they is. They sent us to their fault. We'll find it eventually and maybe get checked in after 24 hours of waiting. Only one person per vessel was allowed to proceed to customs. So Gary decided to take the lead on this one. Notice his collared shirt. Now that's a rare occasion. So we're all checked into Antigua. Brooke's reviewing the paperwork, making sure that it's all proper. And now we're free to roam around, except between the hours of 11 p.m. and 5 a.m. because there's a cure for you. But that's okay, we're usually asleep those hours anyway. So, yeah, we're gonna go explore it. Uh, it looks really nice here. Can't wait to see it all. Now that we were all checked in, our friends on Too Short picked us up to go for sundowners. We made our way to a local pub and started to celebrate. Even though it was only a 36 hour sail, it's always an accomplishment arriving safe and sound in a new country. We headed to English Harbor, which is known for Nelson's Dockyard, a cultural heritage site and marina named after Admiral Horatio Nelson. This site is full of history and artifacts, which could be talked about for days but we thought we'd share a few things that interested us. Women, rum, and sailing.
women were banned from the dockyard as they were seen as a distraction to the men. But interestingly enough, some ships displayed female sculptures on the bow as superstitious sailors believed females to be the best navigators and shamed stormy seas into calm waters. Rum was introduced to the Royal Navy in the 17th century because it was cheap. A half pint of rum was served to sailors at noon and equal to a gallon of beer. Outside the museum stands the remnants of the sail loft. These 14 columns supported the sail loft. This area was used to repair sails. Longboats used the canal running along the pillars to deliver the sails that needed mending. Not far from the pillars is Fort Berkeley. This is where the British Navy was stationed for a couple hundred years in the Caribbean. So there's a whole bunch of uh, buildings and artifacts and cannons. The Royal Navy had begun using English Harbor as a safe haven in the 1700s, where Fort Berkeley was built on the harbor entrance to defend against intruders. There's the goats. So we're anchored here in front of Galleon Beach here in Freeman Bay. And it's kind of crazy to think about coming in the entrance to this tight little channel here and having 24 cannons aimed at you, ready to blast holes in your boat. So it's pretty uh, pretty wild how sailing worked back in uh, the 1700s and 1800s. Definitely a lot different than, uh, than now. After the land was returned to the Antigua government in 1906, the harbor facilities fell into ruins. But in 1951, a restoration program was launched, and after 10 years, in 1961, the naval dockyard became an attraction for island visitors, and now home to one of the finest superyacht facilities in the Eastern Caribbean. Right outside the anchorage of English Harbor, the entrance is guarded by these huge rock soldiers, known as the Pillars of Hercules. It is a well-known dive site, so we decided to put on our snorkel gear and check it out. We weren't surprised to see giant boulders with coral cover, but we weren't sure what these rings were for. Any guesses? We weren't too impressed by the dive site, but then this little dude came by to say hello, and my day was made. You guys know how much I love turtles. place we visit has crystal clear water and colorful coral, but each place is beautiful in its own way. It was quite cool to see these old giant anchors from the ships of years past. There were some scuba divers that swam by, and of course Gary couldn't resist going to say hello. Just when we were getting ready to call it a day, this massive eagle ray came by. We wanted to watch the sunset from a nearby lookout, so we set off to find the trailhead. We are trying to figure out how to get on this trailhead, 
and the road we need is there. So I guess we need to hop the fence. Sometimes exploring doesn't come easy, and without access to a car, we decided to take a shortcut. Always an adventure. We never know where our shortcuts are gonna take us. We found the trailhead and made our way around the hillside. This trail was super cool because we had a waterfront view the entire way around the top. Bed kept getting better than the last. Holy hell, look at this place. There's literally like a fort on every corner. This place is crazy. There's so much history around English Harbor. There was no way we could possibly see it all during our time spent here. We made it to the lookout just in time to pop open our drinks and watch the stunning sunset. Shirley Heights is a restored military lookout and it's about 500 feet above sea level overlooking English Harbor and One Life. many sunsets out here and although stunning we are still waiting to see the green flash so we just got done watching the sunset at the top of shirley heights and now we're gonna run down this trail and get home before the mosquitoes come out and we can't see anything bye <laughs> let's go run 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 so you may wonder what thanksgiving is like out here well it starts out just like thanksgiving at home lots of food prep And this is how we carry our Thanksgiving side dishes. For the past six years, we've celebrated Friendsgiving and always kicked it off with mimosas. So this year was not any different. And afterward looked like any other American household. Gary lounging, the other guys playing video games, and the girls playing cards and enjoying our beverages. After a few games, it was time to get ready for round two. Welcome to a little thing we call tea time. Basically, it's rum shots and includes a little FaceTiming and more shots with our friends and family back at home. It was time for Gary to make his famous sausage bread. This is a holiday dinner staple, and even though we live on a boat, the show must go on. This recipe has been passed down from Gary's grandma. Sausage bread consists of homemade dough, sausage, mozzarella, and garlic, and it's absolutely delicious. We were so excited to share this with our friends. And while the sausage bread was baking, so we're doing a little pre-Thanksgiving dinner activity here. <laughs> Dead! <laughs> when the bread was complete, we headed over to Sailing Too Short for more festivities. And after a few rubs, it was time to pick up the mashed potatoes. Thanksgiving dinner was complete with turkey, stuffing, all the sides, and of course, sausage bread. Good morning! We are headed into town to do some chores today. We've been in English Harbor for almost a week now, 
and we want to go check out a new spot. Let's get out of here. One of the things we need to do today is find a new SIM card for our cell phone because we received notification that T-Mobile is shutting off our international plan, which is a bummer. I guess it's actually not international. We had a Digicel card in Grenada that we used when we were there, but apparently not all Digicel cards are the same from country to country. We followed this stone wall down the main road until we got to a residential area. Welcome to the cell phone store. Not quite the cell phone store you imagined, is it? This is not only where locals get their cell phone plans, but also serves as a small grocery for all the necessities. So we got our SIM card, got data again, no idea what the plan actually is. I think we get 12 gigabytes of data for the month and it cost us about 100 EC. As we made our way back home, we came across Woodstock Boat Builders of Antigua. It looked like a pretty cool place and we were hoping to find somebody to show us around. But after peeking in a few buildings, we couldn't find a soul, so we continued on our way. Next stop, a nearby chandlery. Got some random stuff here at Budget Supply. Budget. We got some 610 adhesive. This is like a two-part adhesive, great for fiberglass repairs. Rigging tape to help protect some of our shrouds and stuff. There's some sharp edges that we need to cover up so the sails don't get torn. And a courtesy flag for Antigua because it's always nice to fly the courtesy flag of the country that you're in. So that's all for today. We did a good job of not spending on uh, things we don't need in there. We always uh, enjoy walking around the chandleries, looking at all the boat stuff. It's like going to Home Depot for us. It's like going to Home Depot for Gary. After a quick stop for lunch at the famous Roti Sioux, which serves our favorite Caribbean dish, roti, we made our final stop. So there's a little market here with a dinghy dock. And since we're leaving English Harbor to head around to the eastern end of the island where there's not as much uh, towns and markets, we're gonna stock up a little more on groceries so we can go be pretty independent. And in case you're wondering what is needed to stock up, it's quite simple. Fresh veggies and rum. We finished up with all our chores and we're gonna pull anchor and head over to Green Island. It's been nice here, but when we got back from doing our chores... We got a new neighbor! <laughs> Look who moved in! <laughs> Let's pull the anchor. We hope you decide to follow along next time as we head off the beaten path in Antigua and see what all the buzz is about. I did. I grabbed hold of her so she wouldn't fall off. Push me right down. Hey! Hey you! Hey go! Nice balls! Where will we go? What in the quarantine thing that you're with us! Thank you for joining us in the USBI and guiding us to St. Lucia, where we were harassed. <laughs> and we had to leave quickly, but thank you for allowing us to pick up a turkey and some pumpkin pie. <laughs> Wait, I made it! <laughs> I made the spot. And thank you for keeping our captains awake during the sail and the mermaids on the boat. <laughs>